everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am going to be going over the top most disappointing books I read in 2021. Yes, I like to focus on most disappointing as opposed to worst, because to me, None of these books I think are like actively bad, but they definitely disappointed me or didn't meet my expectations in some way or another. And so I have my favorites video up and this is the flip side of that. That said, I did have stronger negative feelings about some than others, but I am gonna be talking about these in no particular order. None of these will really surprise you if you've been watching my reading wrap ups all year long, but who doesn't love a good rehashing of my feelings on The Maidens? <laughs> So why not start with The Maidens by Alex Michalides. As you may know if you watched my reading wrap up that featured this, I really did not like this book. This falls into one of the books where I can say, I mean, it's not even about disappointment. I just flat out had serious problems with this book. Where it skirted the edges of dark academia, I actually found a lot to like about The Maidens, and I'd say what I liked best was a lot of the atmosphere, a lot of the tone, the setting. We love a creepy old college where there's a serial killer at large. That said, it feels like a book that needed another pass, needed a different lens. Like, it niggled at me the whole time reading. Like, this would be really good if it were from the point of view of the niece, not the aunt, if it was the actual student at the school being a part of it. But ultimately, what the maidens wanted to do and what the maidens wanted to say, what the author was going for, is really not for me. I felt there were things that came completely out of left field that if you go back and try to look for the clues that they're not there and that really bugs me personally as a reader like organic logical follow through on a twist is really important to me as a reader. I found it at times really pretentious. I found the main character made a lot of really stupid decisions that went slightly beyond stupid heroine syndrome where it just was like did a, any woman read this and maybe offer suggestions of like actually it's not sexy or cool to be stalked by multiple men and think it's no big deal. Maybe try to give your main character a personality beyond being in love with her dead husband. Little suggestions here. And like ultimately those are just things that really bother me personally as a reader. I can see where some people would enjoy The Maidens though I personally just even if you enjoy it more than I did, it's gotta bother more than just me, the lack of proper logical foreshadowing of some of the twists. And the, the twist itself, I find vaguely cool. I just essentially would love it if it were seated in a different book with completely different execution. <laughs> So ultimately, The Maidens was a massive disappointment for me because the vibes were pretty good and it had some good moments, but the sum of its parts overall a huge miss for me. And so my next most disappointing book of 2021 is The Silent Patient by Alex Michalides because I, I resolved, I was like, I will give this author another shot. He's an international bestseller. This book, The Silent Patient, his first book, was a massive hit. Maybe The Maidens is a sophomore slump book. I did like The Silent Patient more than The Maidens, but when it came to putting together the most disappointing books list, this is one where it did not live up to the hype for me. I understand the hype and I see where plenty of people would absolutely be floored by this book and love it. But for me, much like The Maidens, it did a couple of the same things that The Maidens did, not as badly, which is why I, I enjoyed it more and rated it higher, but it still really kind of falls flat for me. The main reason is in the, these two books that I read, Michalides has this habit of he clearly works back from a twist but has no issues completely dismantling the entire logical organic narrative that comes before the twists. It's all about that big twist even if it invalidates everything that came before and I really personally dislike that in thrillers that I read where you get to the twist and you go all of a sudden yeah, but now XYZ that happened either doesn't make sense or was pointless. And it's the idea of feeling like the whole journey and all of the red herrings were ultimately pointless. And I just don't like that 
failing. That said, to be fair to the silent patient, it overall handled its twist way better. It is foreshadowed it just still does that other thing and another thing with just both of these that is a personal thing they have a hard on for being really up their own butts about like greek classics and tragedy and metaphor to the lives of the characters that just leave me personally kind of cold. I see where it would be really cool in the first one, but then it's like the second one does it again and I read the second one first. But because it's so heavy handed on the themes of Greek tragedy, it ultimately makes certain things easy to guess actually, because the theming is so heavy handed. Then also again in The Silent Patient, same issue or similar issue I had with The Maidens. I am just not personally into the archetype female character who is, it, it, she's a manic pixie dream girl, except not the manic, not the pixie, but it's like the, I love my dead husband so much, it's my entire personality and every single man in the story wants to have sex with me character. And, each book has one of those. And it's just not for me. Uh, so yeah, this one was disappointing in the sense that it didn't live up to the insane, massive hype. And that's okay. But to give credit to both, uh, Michelides is very good at tone. There are some lovely turns of phrase in the writing, especially in The Silent Patient. I, 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 there was a deft hand there, and I'm willing to give them one more shot, but please, for the love of God, do not theme your next thriller around Greek tragedy so that I guess the, the ending again. My next most disappointing read of 2021 was a nonfiction book that funnily enough led me to one of my favorite reads of 2021. It is The Next Everest by Jim Davidson. This is an account of a climber who was on Everest in 2015 when there was a massive earthquake which ended the climbing season and devastated Kathmandu. And he talks about his journey to mountaineering in general, overcoming obstacles, and going back to Everest to get that summit. It is a very straightforward, like A to B to C type nonfiction memoir. I had some issues with the pacing. It goes really, really long and repetitive on going through the Kumbu ice fall, back to base camp, like the up and the down mechanics over and over again on two different climbs. And while on the one hand, I really appreciate how many times they go through the Kumbu ice fall and up and down and up and down to acclimatize. And that's definitely interesting. I mean, the book had a pacing problem. I am rarely, if ever, bored <laughs> reading this type of nonfiction, mountaineering disaster nonfiction, but there were sections where I really had to push myself through reading. And specifically what was disappointing to me and was missing for me personally as a reader that led me to the other book I read that I loved was a lack of almost self-awareness, context, history. And ultimately it comes down to not all books can be all things for all people. And it's totally okay for someone to write a very straightforward accounting of, I was on the mountain when an earthquake happened, I wasn't able to climb, it was my dream to reach the summit, so I went back and I did it later. That is legit, but I really want a lot more texture, context, and as I said, self-awareness because there is a certain surrealness to reading about incredibly wealthy white Westerners dropping massive amounts of money on almost killing themselves to get to the top of a mountain. And I need at least a dose of a little bit of analysis of that in my mountaineering fiction, 8,000 meter peak mountaineering fiction. Like I want to really like chew on and think about that. And I just didn't get this from that book. That said, the last third, the pacing issue is resolved and the actual like quest to get up the mountain is edge of your seat reading, but I just had issues with some of the execution before that. So it was just a disappointing book. And if you're curious, the book that I ended up picking up that scratched every single itch I had left from this book, like the history and the politics and like asking those questions, including about summit fever. That book is The Third Pole by Mark Sinat, which is on my favorites of 2021 list. 
The next disappointing book of 2021 is Shiver, which is an adult thriller. And I didn't dislike this book. We're just talking about disappointments. And the main disappointment here is that I went in expecting a very traditional isolation trope thriller, and it's not a traditional isolation trope thriller. It's still good and has a lot to recommend itself, but it just didn't necessarily meet my expectations. It's about a group of former competitive snowboarders who are meeting for a reunion at their old snowboarding spot. It's a group of five people and they haven't seen each other in years, I think it's 10, since one of their group, the sixth member, disappeared and or baby died on the mountain. There's a ton of history there. Zoskia was really polarizing She's the sister of one of the people at the reunion. She was the fiercest rival of the main POV character who also had like maybe romantic stuff with two of the people at the reunion. So it's a lot about kind of the messy personal stuff that went down all those years ago and like where they are now. And as soon as they get to the mountain, it becomes very, very clear that someone has brought them there for a reason. It has that trope of like, I thought you invited me. No, I thought you invited me. Who invited us here? And it's very clear that whomever it is thinks one of them killed Saskia and they're there for revenge, etc. And they're quickly cut off from the rest of the mountain and realize that they're stranded and that they're maybe trapped here with someone who wants to hurt them. Now, in a traditional isolation trope mystery, you expect bodies to start falling, usually by the end of act one, or even before it can be an inciting incident. And it's usually like, it's an Agatha Christie thing. It's a one by one. It's like, yo, it's the tension of who's going to be the next person to die. This just doesn't follow that pacing structure. So it's just a matter of going in knowing it's creepy trapped on the mountain for the vast majority of the book as you're going back and forth in time between the current timeline on the mountain and that last season of snowboarding when all of this dramatic stuff went down. I actually loved the flashback chapters a lot. It had excellent tension if you want like rich ultra competitive people you know i think it's in the french alps like like pursuing this goal at all costs is like cocky young 20 somethings that it really delivers on like drama and tension and i liked the interplay back and forth of like trying you play the guessing game of like well what did happen to zoskia and did one of these five do it is there an extra party who was with them and on the mountain like what is going on and who is behind it it also ended up playing with some tropes and making some choices that just aren't my personal favorite. So I ended up being slightly disappointed by the twist in the third act climax. That said, it had a phenomenal like twist twist at the very end that almost redeems the whole book. It like this one really sits in the middle for me. So it represented a disappointment because I had really high hopes for it because I adore the isolation trope. I love snowy settings. We love trapping people on a mountain. It just wasn't exactly what I was expecting. But still really good. I mean, honestly, I, I do generally recommend it if you also like this trope, but go in knowing it's not like a body's falling every 10 to 20 percent kind of isolation trip thriller. The next disappointing book of 2021 uh, is also a thriller. This one's a YA thriller, also an isolation trope thriller. Actually, the isolation trope part of the thriller in this one it was exactly what I wanted. It really scratched an itch. It is a far more direct and then there were none inspired book, 10 by Gretchen McNeil, where 10 teens trapped on an island off the coast of Seattle and they start dying one by one. It's very satisfyingly done, really high tension, definitely some good guessing and twists that I really appreciated. This one just ended up being disappointing and it's really not the book, it's more me in that this book was published almost 10 years ago and it really reads like older school YA like lower YA and so it it sat in this weird space for me of like awful things are happening and kids are dying but they don't curse you know there's another aspect that just kind of like got in the way for me that I actually forgot to say in my reading wrap-up initially but I did mention in my Goodreads review this, it's a spoilery thing, but it 
relies, the backbone of the book relies on a very specific mental health trope that I really don't like. It's one that I've seen in a couple of thrillers that I am just not a fan of. And I will say as a shorthand here, just like to give a hint, it, it's, it's a specific trope that relates to bullying and self-harm that I am just not a fan of. Uh, and there's one other mental health thing it does that I also wasn't a fan of. And since the backbone of the book is something that I'm not a huge fan of, and also just how it reads a little bit lower YA, it just wasn't a 100% me book. It is still one that I would recommend specifically to actual teen readers, TM, because it is an excellent isolation trope YA thriller. It just it had those kind of things that made it disappointing for me. The next disappointing book I read in 2021, hilariously, it's the same title as a book that was on my favorites list. What is it in 2021 with books called The Push? So The Push on my favorites list was by Ashley Aldrain, and The Push on my most disappointing books list is by Claire McGowan. The thing is, I've, I've read Claire McGowan's previous books, and she's a author I quite like, a thriller author I quite like. She publishes with Amazon and so they're almost always, they always end up on Kindle Unlimited. I highly recommend her canon if you are interested. But for me this, it just had some very specific things it did that made it disappointing for me. I still overall liked the book as I overall like all of her books and I talked about it at length in my original review but it just has a couple of things it does in relation to abusive relationships, adoption, and geriatric pregnancy, we're gonna put that in quotes, that just really did not work personally for me. And this one really falls in like, it was okay, but like the like the further away from it I get, the more disappointed I feel by the read, which is why it ended up going on this list. It also did this thing that really frustrates me as a reader, where there were certain secrets that were incredibly obvious, pretty clearly telegraphed, that were sustained and sustained far longer than they probably should have been because they needed to be a twist in the third act, but because it was so obvious, it just ends up being frustrating in the reading experience and then a letdown at the reveal. And that's always going to lead to a more disappointing read for me. And the final disappointing book I read in 2021 was The Last Resort by Susie Holiday. This one, the disappointment was for a similar reason to my issues with Shiver, though to a very different degree. I still honestly recommend Shiver as a thriller, even though it didn't meet my expectations for an isolation trope thriller. This book also did not meet my expectations for an isolation trope thriller. It also has a pacing problem with regard to like when, when are the bodies gonna start dropping, but in a very different way. The Last Holiday I think was mostly done a disservice by its own publisher, cause the disappointment came from the bait and switch I felt from the description of the book not matching the book that I read. You think it's the isolation trope of a bunch of strangers are invited to this lush island to test a new technology and then things start going wrong. Every guest has a secret and specifically it said as the clock counts down to a lavish end of day party, injuries and infighting split the group, there is no escape from the island or the other guests most shocking secrets and Amelia begins to suspect that her only hope for survival is to be the last one standing. Can she confront her own dark past to uncover the truth before it's too late to get out. Only I didn't feel like that was the book that I read. There's never any real sense of a ticking clock. There's never any real sense of survivalist tension, which is what you expect from an isolation trope thriller, because the book pulls its punches for the majority of the pacing. It's, oh, I wonder where that person went and they're going to be fine. There's never confirmation of a body actually dropping until the third act, which scuttles all of the pacing and tension that were promised. And that main character, Amelia, never actually thinks to herself in the course of the main thrust of the book, oh, I have to confront my own secrets in order to save myself? That's just not what you get. Instead of a traditional isolation trope thriller where a bunch of strangers are brought to an island and they start dying one by one, you have a bunch of strangers brought to an island with a 
technology angle, it's basically like it's kind of speculative, the book, but kind of weirdly speculative, where you get long passages because they have these things implanted into their brain where their secrets are broadcast for everyone to watch. And so you as the reader just get these long passages describing them watching something, which it just, it's, it's a real mixed bag. And because I just never felt the character based tension. They never actually feel in danger. And so it's just like, you're like, what is this building to? What is this building to? And you get to what it is building to. And I found the third act set piece, the climax, really ridiculous. And the bad guy and their entire motivation, I didn't like or believe any of it. Tonally, it goes from like zero to 60 right there. And so it just ends up being a thriller where there's a real lack of tension and stakes throughout the book and then when you finally get to the big reveal it's more of a head scratcher than anything honestly it has some huge logical holes you as a reader have to make a lot of leaps for it to work and this one yeah it was just a huge disappointment for me the reading experience i got didn't deliver really anything that i'd been promised by the blurb it didn't deliver anything that I really like about isolation trope thrillers and it didn't make up for it with a twist that was particularly like cool or logically founded and the technology aspect which could have elevated the whole thing I found more confusing than anything. Of all the books I read in 2021, this one was probably the biggest disappointment for me, unfortunately. That's it, because I had a really weird reading year. I didn't read as many books as I normally do, but also luckily, happily, for the most part, I read books I either really, really loved or that fell pleasantly in the middle for me. And even these, as you can tell, I still liked a lot of the books that were disappointing for me in one way or another. Just, you know, we do these lists at the end of the year and people really, really like this one. And I think it's really interesting to examine why books don't work for you, whether you don't like them at all or you just kind of fall in the middle. And so I mean, I definitely like analyzing why certain things don't work for me and I hope you enjoyed this as well. What I want to know down below in the comments, because this is a fun topic, what were your most disappointing reads of 2021? Or if you categorize your books as like best and worst, what were your worst reads of 2021? Like what books just didn't do it for you? Let me know down below or if you read any of these and have either similar feelings or different feelings, let's talk about books. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it because it helps me in the algorithm and you know I'll continue to make bookish content because I really, really enjoy it. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy reading.